Yes lads, Bailey here. So today I have got the 352 um, formation breakdown and custom tactics video. Um, I did say I'd do this in I think a few videos ago to be honest. Um, this formation this year actually works quite well to be honest in the games I've used it. Um, the custom tactics as well work very well and as per usual I will go through and you know recommend players for each position. Um, in this one though I will be doing the centre backs mainly in particularly you know the wider centre backs they have a pretty key role and so do the wide the wide mids in this formation um, again like I said it, it does work well this formation this year I would recommend it as well if you you know want to spice it up a bit you know try something different um, and the good thing is in defence it almost feels like you have five at the back with the wingers dropping back but in attack it also feels like you know you're attacking with five as well so it's quite a, a cool formation to be honest to use. Uh, something different as well from you know like the four two three ones and stuff like that. So if you want to try it, I, I do highly recommend it. Uh, this is probably the best three at the back sort of formation. You can have well the most balanced three at the back formation, I'd say. Um, so yeah, we'll get into the custom tactics just now. Right then, so here are the custom tactics. As per usual, I've got five custom tactics set out for you. Um, or ones you could you know pick and use obviously you if you start in a different formation you can only have four but um, I, I um, have five you know just give you a bit of variety we'll start with a balanced again this is a pretty generic one for um, all of the custom tactics sort of videos however usually the depths on three I've just bumped it up to four because uh, in the games I did use this um, obviously you have players a lot you know you don't have as many back in defense so having them a bit higher up the pitch just means you can um you know maybe win the ball back a bit quicker and stuff like that especially against the drop back counter attacks um but it, again it's preference if you want it to have them three two you can but just for this sort of you know default balanced one you know you're going into a game you don't really want to be sitting back but you want to be going forward but you don't want to concede if that sort of makes sense um i'd recommend these so yeah I don't play about of width if you are new really, I don't like, really like to play about of width too much. I like to pretty much just keep it on 5-5 five, five for most part, maybe apart from the attacking, like ultra attacking ones, you're up it just to spread the pitch a bit more. But yeah, 4 depth, um, offensive style balanced, uh, this basically just means you can do a bit of everything. You can, If you want to play possession, your players can play possession. If you want to play far, like a faster build-up, you can, you know, just triggering it with LB runs or L1 runs if you're on PlayStation, stuff like that. Um, yeah, just balance, you know, you don't want, if you do fast build-up, your CDMs will be pushing up the pitch too much and you'll just be left quite vulnerable on the counter-attack because what you've got to remember is if them two CDMs push up, your wide players are probably pushed up as well. You've, you've left yourself with three at the back. So you, ideally, you're going to want to have your two CDMs to just sit back. So you just have, you know, a bit of security at the back. And that's why the wider centre-backs are so key because they have to act as full-backs at times. And that will be, you know, who I specifically go into a bit more detail on and the wide mids. But yeah, players in the box, four. I did used to have it on three as a generic, but over time I've bumped it up to four, just because I mean, crossing isn't really that effective. So if you can actually do low driven ones nearer to the goalkeeper, you'll see a higher success in you know being able to just guide the ball home. Corners and free kicks are preference, but again, if you want just a generic one, I'd keep it on three three. Uh, with the instructions, so obviously centre backs will stay back normal interceptions, but the wide players. I've put them on comeback and getting behind. So this basically means they'll be joining the attack, but they'll also be sitting back or helping out. If anything, they do drop into a full back sort of role on defense or wing back role, should I say. Um, so you pretty much do end up having five at the back when you defend if they're set up in position. But you want the getting behind because you do still want to be able to spread the pitch and then to make the attacking runs. Because uh, these sort of players do need to be a bit of an all-rounder, to be honest. Um, your two CDMs, you're going to have on stay back while attacking cover centre. Again, you don't want them pushing up the pitch. Um, you want them to just hopefully be sitting back, you know, helping out the defence in case you do get counter-attacked. Uh, because then the centre-backs will tend to drop into the wider positions. And then your two CDMs can drop into more, you know, just in front of that central centre-back. Um 
Cover center, you don't want it on cover wide because you've already got these wide players out there to cover it for you. So it's just a way you might as well just have them in that center for the interceptions. Um, you can. Now, I would keep, I'd put your cam on comeback, to be honest, because you're going to tend to find that um, if you, in this formation, you need a bit of structure. Like, you'll, you'll obviously have your three at the back, you'll have your four in midfield, but then that only gives you seven, well, eight if you include the goalkeeper behind the ball. If you just have that cam there, not only will they sit just in front of the CDMs, so if you do win the ball back, they'll be in a deep position to pick the ball up and then, you know, link the attacking play on. So that's why I like to have it on comeback because then they can support the defence but also link for a counter-attack or, you know, just, you know, an, an outlet, essentially, a closer outlet to then play into the strikers. Um... For both the strikers on this, though, I just have getting behind, stay forward. You want them to be making the forward runs. Uh, you want them to pretty much, in a balanced sort of formation, you want them, well, not formation, uh, custom tactic even. You, you don't really want them to be doing um, the defensive duties. You just want them to be up there ready for the counter-attacks and, you know, to just be getting in behind and stuff like that. Uh, we'll move on. We'll go from ultra-defensive to ultra-attacking. So with ultra defensive, again, this is pretty much if you're two nil, one nil up, you just want to hold on to the lead, drop back depth one, uh, five width. Like I say, don't really like to play around with it. Depth one, you want as many people behind the ball as possible, pretty much, and as deep as possible. As you can see there, I mean, in game it won't, it doesn't actually look like that, but uh, your centre backs are pretty much on the six yard box, so they are going to be very deep and very um, far back behind the um, ball. Um, offensive style, I'd have it on possession. Players in a box one. You don't really want anyone really getting in a box. If you get it in that wide position, you want to be trying to keep it in the corners and just kill the time. Corners are one and one. Again, you don't want really anyone on in the box because you want to be set up for the counter attack. I'll go into a bit why I use possession though. So, with how slow this game can be at times, <laughs> but having it on possession just means you'll have your players making them runs. Uh, them shorter runs to you um, so they basically give you more options just to be able to keep the ball uh, a lot more effectively so if you're confident enough with um, playing with possession and you know being able to keep the ball I'd, I'd put on that if not I'd put on long ball you just want your strikers or uh, yeah you won't even have your wingers getting up the pitch you'll just have your strikers making them forward runs and you know just hoof it up there and get the ball as far away from your goal as possible but personally, I like to have it on possession because I feel confident enough with being able to keep the ball in this gameplay. So, obviously, centre backs are on stay back. Now, with the wingers, I have both of them just come back, and instead they of having it on getting behind, I just have it on balance support. So basically, they they won't they'll be essentially working alongside the CDMs. They might be a bit more advanced than the CDMs and making maybe one or two more forward runs. Um, well, they'll be making one or two more runs in the CDMs. They'll be making none at this point. Um, but yeah, again, you just want to be able to have as many people behind the ball when you don't have it. You can. I'd have that on comeback. Again, you don't want them up the pitch. You just want them to be able to um, support in defence at this point. Now, I'd have both strikers on comeback and mixed attack. Again, if you're going to play the long ball, though, I'd put both of them on getting behind, but um, definitely have it on defensive support as comeback. Uh, but yeah, if you're playing possession, I'd have it on mixed because you don't really want them to be making loads of forward runs. You want them to be dropping shorter, uh, creating an option for a pass. So that's why I'd have it on um, mixed attack for that one. Uh, moving on to the defensive one now this is if you're unsure going into a game or it's like I don't know you've just scored one or two you don't really want to be able to cost the lead in this formation I'd stick it on drop back depth three I wouldn't go depth one because again you don't really want to be pinning yourself against the wall in that sort of situation if it's early in the game or something um, Again, so you want a decent amount of players behind the ball, but you don't want them so far behind the ball that you can't really uh, effectively counter attack or something like that. Um, again, width don't play about with offensive style balance. Now, same reason for the balance custom tactic. Again, it just does a bit of everything for you. Um, if you have a preferred offensive one, then obviously go to that. 
but balance just does a bit of everything to be honest it's it's pretty well it kind of works well against any sort of opponent because even if your opponent's you know a possession player you could use fast build up against them when you then get the ball to make your chances with the ball you know I like exit you know make the most of your chances with the ball um but I mean even then balance I find just more a bit more you know again like I said it's all round it does a bit of everything so that's why I personally prefer it and would recommend it players in the box three again you could bump it up to four it don't really matter at this point either way you don't you only really want your strikers getting in a box you don't want anyone else so it doesn't matter if you have it on three or four corners preferences per usual um for obviously center back stay back the wingers i have put on comeback and balance support now the balance support basically means again they'll do a bit of everything they'll come short for the ball they'll get in behind so that's quite useful um especially in this because you know you don't you might not be wanting to rush every attack or use the wide players to just get in behind and stuff like that so to have it on just come back basically means in defense they'll be back um, tell pal and then in attack you know they'll filter from you know stand back to then making the forward runs and stuff like that so it works quite well um, both CDMs I have stay back while attacking cover centre on as per usual um, for the attacking mid I'll have come back uh, again you just want them to be able to support and link the play up um, with the you know receive the ball and link it into the strikers but I have my right striker, and for me this would be uh, Messi, um, on getting behind, come back. Now, the comeback basically means, again, they'll be able to link the play with the cam. So you have the support in defence of having like 10 behind the ball, depending on where obviously your opponent has the ball. Um, but then the, it'll just you'll find your build up play so much more effective if you have in this sort of custom tactic if you have one of your strikers on comeback so they'll be able to link the play with the other striker and then you can ping passes from one another and stuff like that and then obviously the other one just getting behind basic I won't have it on stay forward the basic just means they might feel a uh, or they'll they'll occasionally maybe switch with this one as to who actually stays further up the pitch works quite uh, well to be honest um, so the attacking one I have it on balanced 5 um, depth obviously width 5 um, this basically means in this sort of one it'd be when you're about a goal down I'd say you'd switch this goal or two down and it, you know you need to start putting on a bit of pressure so 5 depth basically means you're not going to have loads of people far behind the ball you're going to have it pretty you know this, I'd say this is quite a generic depth in terms of w w when you're in that sort of situation um, or if drop back wasn't so effective on this year and stuff like that um, but yeah 5 depth basically means you won't have that many players that far behind the ball um, as you can see when you have it on depth 1 your players were at the edge of the 6 yard box whereas now your defenders are at the edge of the 18 so it works a bit better Balanced again, you just want to be able to do a bit of everything. Uh, players in the box, I would bump it up though to six. Basically, means if you get your wide player out in, well, if your wide player is out with the ball and you're going to whip in across, you have your two strikers and your cam join in the box again. It just puts creates a bit more chaos in the box for your opposition. Works quite well. Corners of preference. In terms of instructions, obviously, centre back to stay back. Now. I'd have come back getting behind. It's a bit like the balanced one in that sense. Um, on your wingers, again, you, you you don't really want to be leaving yourself exposed at the back. You do still want them to help out in terms of you know kind of creating a five at the back. But you do want them to be able to you know get in behind, up the pressure, make more options, make more um, or create more difficulties for your opponent, more for them to think about stuff like that. Both your CDMs, though, I would uh, keep on stay back. Just because of how high the depth is, you don't want to leave yourself exposed with high depth on your three centre backs and no support. You can, I just keep it on basic. You don't really, they will filter back and help out on, def, on the uh, defence and stuff like that. But um, I don't know if I'm saying defence, to be honest, like I'm playing basketball, saying. But 
yeah, they'll filter back a bit with the de- uh, defense. I don't know why I keep saying it, and but they won't be so deep as to if you had them on comeback. And both your strikers are on getting behind, stay forward. You don't want them dropping back, especially if you're a goal or two down. You want them to be staying up there, giving you an outlet. And moving on to the final one, this is if you need to proper put on the pressure, you know, 80th minute, you've activated team press and put this on. The only reason I up the width here on on the defence and uh, the attack is you want a bit, you just want to be able to, you know, cover their wide players or in terms of the defence or you want to be able to create more width to, you know, spread the pitch in the attack. Uh, very high depth you just want to have players up the pitch to be honest you know as soon as you lose a ball bang constant press you're going to have people pre- uh, you want as many people to be able to press the ball especially if you have team press activated as well holding RB or whatever down you know getting as many people near it to, near to the ball again players in the box you just want to create chaos at this point to be honest you, it's your last attempt you just got to go for it with your instructions I'm not sure why it's having come back on both your wingers but you just want them to stay forward and I'm not sure why these haven't changed but basically what you're going to have is you're going to have both, all your centre backs still on stay back you're going to have your wingers on stay forward getting behind and you're going to have your, C, one of your right CDM your more defensive one on stay back cover centre and your left CDM on um, just balanced all over and cover centre this CDM will basically be the one who's joining the attack and leaves you essentially with four at the back with both with your three centre backs and your uh, right at the end now your cam you want to have on stay forward to be honest you could even put get into the box that again that would probably help just you know you don't want them filtering back on the defence and then both your strikers you want to have it on getting behind stay forward now if you're confident enough with it, I'd put aggressive interceptions on. But you know, I just keep. If you're not, just keep it on normal. To be honest. So that was the uh, custom tactics and instructions. I will uh, jump into some players I'd recommend for the, the uh, positions in the three-five-two in just a sec. Right then. So I've got a bunch of centre backs here who are all pretty good for um, this sort of formation. So what I'd recommend is I'd have your quicker centre backs. So let's say yeah, like Manalas and Theo Hernandez as your right centre back and left centre back, and try and match it up with like. So let's say uh, Lucas Hernandez has a left foot, so I put him left centre back, and then Manalas has a right, so I put him right centre back. If that makes sense. Um, but your central centre back, uh, a lot of these, to be fair, most of these here are capable of playing the right centre back and left centre back. Um, but out of all your three centre backs, I'd have your tallest one as your centre one, because they'll tend to be the one who can beat, uh, can beat, competes even for the um, what's it called header if the goalkeeper kicks it long and stuff like that. So I'd recommend having your taller one there, or the one with the most jumping, like a Sergio Ramos, so it's like 93 jumping and stuff. Um, but yeah, these are all some pretty good centre backs. Obviously, you can see the ones on the bench there. On the pitch, we got Militao, Joe Gomez, Ake, Hermoso, is it? I think Stark, um, Kane, I think uh, Kanate, even I think Kane. I don't know to be honest. Eric Bailly, um Danaya, um, Murillo, LVD, and Bastos. Um, a lot of these are very cheap, you'll find. Um, some of the key stats, to be honest, what you're looking out for, obviously, you need def- uh, decent defensive stats. All right, physical. If they're going to be on the wide centre backs, they need at least, like, I don't know, at least 70 plus pace, I'd say. Preferably a lot more, like 75 ish, like an Ake or something, or this Kanate or Kanate, however you pronounce it. Um, obviously, good defensive awareness. Decent enough reactions would be good, but obviously a lot of these cheaper guys won't have the decent reaction. So like Amarillo is a pretty good card though, to be honest, because he's got the pace, he's got uh, good defending stats, good physical stats, and then he's got also pretty high agility and balance for a centre back and all right reactions. But yeah, uh, a lot of these centre backs, obviously some of them will cost you quite a bit, like uh, Sergio Ramos, Kula Bali, Longley, um, Hernandez. Sanchez, but then there's cheap ones like Rudiger, Lindelof, and most of the geezers that on the pitch, to be honest. Maybe apart from your Edmilitao, who'll probably sit back about 20 ish K or something like that. But 
yeah, a lot of these centre backs would work very well for this formation. Uh, we'll move on to the two CDMs just now then. So then for CDMs, uh, again, have got a wide range of them here. Um, your right CDM though, you want to have it as your more defensive one. And the reason for that is, um, obviously, if you saw, well, in the custom tactics, you just saw, um, for the ultra attacking one, your right, your left CDM will be joining the attack a lot more than your right. So, um, yeah, basically just have a bit more of a, you know, all-rounder who can attack uh, your left CDM. You don't have to be great at attacking. Like, I have this Rinky De Jong as my left CDM, and he does a pretty all-right job with the more attacking role. Um it's got pretty solid all round stats. Um, but yeah, some of the ones we got Kante, Witzel, Rodri, Matuidi, Fabinho, Ndidi, Delaney, Gaia, uh, Torreira, Vecino, Lerma. I ain't even going to try and pronounce this guy's name, but he's got pretty solid all round, you know, more defensive card for how cheap he is. Um, Jabamin, Saul. Allen, obviously Frankie De Jong, I was one to watch, that's why he's in there. Goretzka, um, Rabiot, Wijnaldum, Herrera, Thomas Partey, um, Herrera, Hector Herrera even, and Moussa Sissoko. So yeah, like I said, all of them can pretty much play the right DM or left DM, but obviously have your more attacking one as your left DM. Someone like a Goretzka as well would be perfect for that sort of role. Um, maybe even a Delaney. But indeed, someone like Ndidi you'd want to have as your right CDM, even though he's got, he ain't even got that bad attacking stats, you could probably play him as your left DM if you've got a more defensive one. But yeah, this NDD card just looks fantastic, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, they're the sort of CDMs I play. Uh, we'll move on to the wide players, because the wide players, they need to be able to get back and forward in this sort of formation. Um, so yeah, we'll jump into them now. So in terms of wingers, it's kind of, a bit harder for the sort of kind of wing you need for this formation. Um, I've obviously got some of them who can, uh, who are very very good attack, when all pretty much very good in attack, and not so good in defence. But there are a lot of also you know more defensive options here. So we got like Pepe for example. He ain't got good defence, but it helps because he's tall. So the interceptions you know with how AI defending is on this game, steel OP and stuff like that. Being tall as well, that always helps. So we got like Pepe, Jesus Navas, who's got pretty decent defensive stats. Uh, Richarlison, who's you know he's got decent physical stats, that kind of helps him in that regard. Um, but also you know he's five eleven, so again quite tall. Antonio, obviously just a beast, isn't he? I mean, very very physical. Again, not the worst defending stats for a right mid. Um, Salah, obviously this is a more attacking option. He might be able to do a bit of a job in defence, but. Again, a bit more attacking. Bale's a sort of, you know, perfect kind of player for this um, sort of formation. This Bale and this Atal, I'd say, are the kind of perfect ones because defensively they are still they are pretty decent, and in attack they they are good as well. Uh, Lozano, um, again, he ain't the tallest, he ain't the quickest, but like Salah, he, he's doing an all right job. Martial, again, fairly tall though, six foot. Uh, same with Sane. And then obviously a towel, Perisic, Rafa, and then this geezer, uh, Goosens, I don't have a clue, medium high. If you're looking for a cheap left mid in the Serie A for this formation, he's your man, I'm telling you. The Serie A is pretty good for this formation in terms of a cheap squad, to be honest, and I'd get this guy as your left mid. He can, again, he ain't got the greatest attacking, but the defensive stats are like a fullback, to be honest. I'd, I'd highly recommend him. So yeah, they're sort of wingers. We'll move. I'll put the cam and the striker together um, before I just quit. Uh, before I quickly uh, wrap up the video. Right then. So on the bench we have the strikers I'd recommend, and on the pitch we have, I mean, the centre forwards you could probably play in either the striker or cams, um, and, but you know it's, it's preference. But yeah, on the pitch we have cams. Um, so I have Mbappe, uh, Aubameyang, Rashford, Werner. Ben Yedder, Rodrigo, Gabriel Jesus, Naki Williams, Bakambu even, uh, Morales, Gamera and Rebic as a striker I'd kind of recommend. Again, there's a lot more out there, a lot more options. Um, but a lot of these strikers are pretty similar to other videos. If you want more of a uh, you know wider selection of you know strikers for two striker formations, um, just uh, look at one of my other videos, uh, formation reviews. I go more in depth with the striking kind of role, but yeah, they're all pretty 
pretty similar to be honest to the old videos again the stats you you look for aren't going to change you know decent pace decent shooting decent agility and balance stuff like that um your cams again aren't really going to change from anything as my controller dies uh so we have Humings on uh griezmann insigne uh zaha jao felix royce depai munayin uh jesse lingard uh, Alejandro Gomez, I believe it is. Yep, and this Kone, I think, is how you pronounce it. So again, yeah, cams. You're looking just for decent agility, balance, decent enough shooting, uh, decent enough pace, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, all of these uh, players on the pitch, I'd say, you know, they can play either striker or um, cam, to be honest. So that was the three-five-two formation review and custom tactics. Or formation breakdown even um, this video should be going out on Monday the 14th or something I didn't go away on the 15th um, but I'm aiming to have two videos out one around Wednesday and one maybe around Saturday Sunday if I manage to get it uh, edited and you know all of that stuff um, sorted out before I go um, but yeah if you did enjoy the video do leave a like uh, comment if you've used this formation or any of my other formations and how you're finding it or video ideas, stuff like that. Uh, subscribe if you are new around here and I'll catch you later.